class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines, a couple new theorems. All right, the first one, now there's no names to these theorems, so if we use them in a proof, you're just going to have to kind of briefly explain what the theorem says. Um, you can use, you know, shortened abbreviations and symbols and things, but no names. All right, the first one says, if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So, a little diagram to help us out, if we have P, Q and R. So three lines, P, Q, and R. If P is parallel to Q and R is parallel to Q, then P has to be parallel to R. So symbolically what that looks like is if P is parallel to Q and R is parallel to Q, then P is going to be parallel to R. So that's what that theorem states. All right, next one says in a plane, so it has to be all coplanar lines, uh, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So let's use, um, let's just use P, Q, and R again, but slightly different setup. And I'm going to move my P's and Q's over. P and Q. All right, so if two lines, so we have P and Q, and they're both perpendicular to R. So if P is perpendicular to R and Q is perpendicular to R, if P perpendicular to R and Q is perpendicular to R, then we know that P has to be parallel to Q. P is parallel to Q. And if we look at the diagram and we draw these diagrams carefully, these theorems, even though they look long and lengthy and you have to explain them in the proof, they're not that bad. They're pretty self-explanatory when you have a good diagram. All right, last third one, last one. In a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it's also perpendicular to the other. So what we have here is slightly different than the last one, looks kind of the same, but this time our given information is that one line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines. So if R is perpendicular to P and P is parallel to Q, so that's our setup here. So if P is perpendicular to R and P is parallel to Q, then, well, what can we say about Q and R? Well, Q and R have to be perpendicular. So Q perpendicular to R. All right, so let's look at a couple, or one example, a couple examples here and use these theorems. Now this isn't a proof and you might need to use these theorems in a proof again, um, but this will kind of give you an idea of what we can, uh, other things we can do with these theorems. So given A, B, C, and D are all distinct lines in the same plane, so we have four different lines, all coplanar lines, tell how A and D relate. So to do this, and we want to justify our answers, to do this we want to draw a diagram. Diagrams are you know, visualizing things in geometry is so important. So let's start with number one and the first information. It says that A is parallel to B. So let's draw two lines, make them parallel, and name them A and B. So just the first piece of information, and I can mark that these lines are parallel. Now it says B is parallel to C. All right, so I need to make line C and make sure that it is parallel to B. And then it says that C is parallel to D. All right, so I have a bunch of lines that are all parallel to each other. So looking at our diagram, what can we say about A and D? Well, I know from my diagram and my information, A has to be parallel to D. All right, um, next one, we have A is perpendicular to B. So let's draw this picture, A is perpendicular to B. So I have A and B, and I need them to be perpendicular. All right, now, let's see, moving my, B is parallel to C. Okay, so I need to draw a C that's parallel to the B line. And this is why it's so important to label your lines as you draw them, so that it's easy to figure out where to put your lines. So those have to be parallel. And, oh, and we need C parallel to D. So now I need to make another line D that's parallel to C. So now, what can we say about A and D? Well, let's look at our diagram, and we can see that A and D are going to have to be perpendicular. 
a perpendicular to D. And justifying your answer can either be explaining it in a sentence or drawing a very detailed diagram like we have here. All right, short little lesson today. That wraps it up. So thanks for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.